I've always felt a smidge of discomfort when addressing posthumous releases. I really feel a responsibility to understand the context of the material's release and whether it's anything that the artist would have wanted out in the open, let alone associating two deceased artists who vocally had no intention of being paired with one another while living, let alone dead like some fucked up puppet show you cash hungry empty skulled renegades. Not like the record label will be able to hear me over the sound of all those coins hitting the floor in their gigantic throne rooms. Anyways, this is not one of the cases of which a posthumous release is to make me want to shake the sense into ignorant fans and record companies, but instead this is more a case of when the artist unfortunately passed just after recording the material, so the release was always intended to happen, a lot like Joy Division or Yanka. Between hearing outstanding albums from Gurumul and Alicia Crampton this year, it's been extremely wonderful and important knowing that right now, with your current ability to switch between tabs containing your email, Mia Malkova, and the Steam Winter Sale within seconds at the push of a left mouse button, thanks to the internet, we have the easiest access to viewing and hearing the art and voices of indigenous artists and their stories, especially from Australian indigenous populations whose words have been and still are silenced for years. Most acclaimed is Jeffrey Gurumul Yunapingu, the most commercially successful Aboriginal Australian musician and one with multi instrumental flair and plenty of stories about his land to tell. However, this time around, on Jarumiri, Child of the Rainbow, there are less words to be spoken and more instrumentals to be played. Traditional songs and harmonised chants meet orchestral arrangements resulting in a very interesting post-minimalism affair. It feels honest and fluid and as if the tracks are naturally taking themselves wherever they wish to, without any formulas to follow, which is something that I can wholeheartedly respect. I find that this is inspiringly grandiose despite being slid into the minimalism post box in a nice envelope, but it is that sometimes subtlety can emphasise what's actually there and make it seem like it means so much more than what it truly is. Which is sort of the same way that I feel about Australia in general. Child of the Rainbow is a spectacular soundtrack to Australian nature, weeping and erupting all at once. There was a genuine churning moment of both fear and excitement rippling through the track Tuna Swimming. On the other hand, the opening track has a stunning fire in its belly as it evokes the image of a fierce sunrise once strings and clarinets begin hypnotically pulsing over triumphant brass, before whoever is on the xylophone starts doing their best Steve Reich impression, not long before Gurumul joins in with his singing. It sounds like the entire world is waking up one individual after another. You should get used to the pulsing way of playing, it's virtually the way that the majority of the album sorts itself out, and luckily it is one that is inherently hypnotic, which is weird, because usually when my lab partner decides that he wants to make honking noises continuously for 5 minutes, he catches a measuring cylinder to the bridge of his nose. It's a case of where understanding the language that the album is written in isn't as important, because the overall impact comes from the way that Gurumul sounds in tandem with the music. I've always had a strange reaction to those who find listening to music written in other languages or dialects difficult. Surely when listening to music, the power initially comes from how the music and the sounds wriggle into your ear. Analyzing the prose comes second. If you're that hopeful, however, the titles of each track should be enough to evoke a certain setting or image, and it works well in the album's favour by encouraging you to use the music to guide said scenario. The percussion on Scrub Fowl is genuinely perfect for its chosen animal, and Saltwater Crocodile fittingly has a bubbling tension as if danger is in close proximity, but you would not necessarily notice that because these croc fellas are mad sneaky. Although I do feel as if a lot of the moments in the album can seem as if they overstay their welcome, especially with such minimal compositions, the general impression from Gurumul's posthumous effort is a positive one, one that I can look back upon from this year as being something stupendously ambitious, as if it were a rejoicing 8 out of 10. I do like reviewing modern classical albums, it gives me a chance to look less weird for giving lots of attention to edgy noise tracks and frequent 